You're listening to an archived Cabral Concept podcast. After listening to this show, check out the most up-to-date podcasts available at stephencabral.com slash podcasts or search directly on iTunes. And now, welcome to the Cabral Concept, where board-certified naturopath and integrative health practitioner Dr. Stephen Cabral shares how he was diagnosed at the age of 17 with a life-altering illness and given no hope for recovery. It was only after studying and traveling all over the world did he discover how to combine ancient Ayurvedic healing practices with state-of-the-art naturopathic and functional medicine to fully rebalance the body and re-energize it with life. It's time to discover how to get well, lose weight, and finally feel alive again. And now, here's your host, Dr. Stephen Cabral. Welcome back, everyone. We are about to get started with part two of our Cabral House Calls. Each and every weekend, we have two shows dedicated to answering our community's questions. I do hope you tuned in yesterday, a little bit of a rant for the first couple minutes of the show, and then we got right into the questions. So many great questions on EMFs, on pesticides, spraying. We went over gut-based testing. We went over low progesterone, high estrogen. We spoke about different book topics. We talked about the Integrative Health Practitioner Certification. And we talked about eating carbohydrates before or after your workout. So check that out. That was episode 1058. And now today, we are going to get into more questions. If you're new to the show, while we answer questions, they come in and we're about 12 weeks you know, basically behind in the queue. So people ask them, let's say today on the weekend, and then I'll get to them in about 11 or 12 weeks or so from now. And I know that seems like a long time away, and it is but we go in order that they came in. So it's literally just first one in is the next one answered. Today's questions are coming in from the beginning of October, 10-3. So if you ask your question before 10-3, well, it's already been answered on a previous house call. We answer every single question. My team basically just copy and paste them into a big giant Word document, and I just go right through them each and every weekend. If you want your question answered sooner than the 12-week mark, of course, we're happy to do that. Just head on over to cabralsupportgroup.com. That is our free Facebook group. And you can simply just click to join the group. We will let you in. And because it's private, because we just want people's questions to be confidential within the group. We're there to support each other. We want positive people, no negative people. We've got enough negative people in the world. We want people that are there to support each other with everything that they're trying to accomplish in life. That's what it's all about. And we have a team that will answer your question within 24 to 48 hours. And what else? If they don't know the answer to the question, well, they send it over to me and I answer that question for you. So hopefully that's helpful. Let us get into the questions now. And the first one is from Stephen. Stephen's asking, I was listening to an interview that Stephen was doing with Lloyd from the EMF Summit. He mentioned that he has a case on his cell phone that helps to block EMF and radiation-based frequencies from his cell phone. I've searched his podcast and his website and could not find anywhere about what case he uses on his cell phone. Would you please give me a link or tell me so I can buy the EMF blocking cell phone cases? I've looked on Amazon and Googled it, and there is so much that comes up. I don't think that the stickers work. Just want to know what he does. Thanks so much for your help. All right, Stephen, yeah, absolutely. Happy to help with this. And that is over at stephencabral.com forward slash podcast, and you will type in EMF, all right? So that's the keyword. So you would just go there. And then I'm just going to give you... Now, these might change in the future. That's why I do like people to continue to keep up with the podcast because I always update You know what might be even better. And what I do is I always give you the best of what is available at that time. And so it never means that the previous recommendation was bad. It just means that things can sometimes be improved. I do agree with you. The sticker is not going to be what you want to use. You'll actually want to use the case, all right? The sticker is is simply not that great. Now, how do you test the case if it's really working or not? Very, very easy. All you do is you buy an EMF meter. Now, I don't own stock in any of these EMF meters, but simply put, you can use the Trifield or the Merck. And again, just go to stevencabral.com forward slash podcast and just type in EMF and you'll see it. Okay, so there's a couple that you can use. We have iPad cases for my two daughters, and you can just go to steamcabral.com forward slash podcast and type in EMF iPad case. I want to give you one more tip on the EMF cases for cell phones. So mine's a one-way case. Now, the reason that it's not going to be the absolute best at blocking EMFs is that if you block EMFs completely with your cell phone case, then there's no updates to your phone. 
right? Because you're not getting a signal. That's the whole point of the case. So when we use them for our daughters on, let's say, a long car trip or an airplane because they don't get to use their iPads except for those times, that that is when it doesn't matter, right? Because they're not using wireless internet. So it doesn't matter. We're just blocking the EMFs. Now, for a cell phone, it's typically a, it's either a sleeve or it's a full case. Now, it blocks RFID, it blocks EMF, but again, it won't let new signals in. So your email will update and your text messages will update once you open the case. So that's why not a lot of people love the cases as well. I'm going to give you a couple brands though, and then you can decide for yourself. One is called Armor Shell. So that's one that I use. And then another is S. YB. That's the sleeve. That's an easy one. You just literally slide your phone into the sleeve. The armor shell is one that actually closes. And then the other one is called Vest. V-E-S-T. I'll give you one more. And it's called Rady or Ratty Armor. R-A-D-I-A-R-M-O-R. And you can simply just obviously play these back and you'll be able to hear all those different recommendations. For the iPad case, let me see if I can get you that as well. Why not, right? Since we're here right now and I use this exact case, all of these things are on the podcast page, but let me just type it in EMF and I'll type in case. I use the Harapad, H-A-R-A-P-A-D for my wife when she's on the couch and she has her laptop. That's what she uses under her lap or I should say under her laptop. And I've tested all of these and they work great. Okay. The EMF protective case right here. Let's check this out. This is the one it's called, it's by Safe Sleeve, S-A-F-E, and then S-L-E-E-V-E, Safe Sleeve. That's what I use for my daughters. I've tested them and it works great. Okay, hopefully that helps. Next up is Beck, B-E-C. And she or he writes in, hi guys, I discovered Stephen's work last year and have been glued to his podcast ever since. I love his and your team's approach to health and wellness and wanted to inquire about services for my mom. She has been suffering from memory loss and severe vagueness for five years after a short stint on heavy steroids, which were prescribed for her fibromyalgia. We're based in Melbourne, Australia, and have tried seeking GPs, naturopaths, functional medicine doctors, and dementia clinic with no definitive answers. I am her daughter and have worked closely with her on all these steps to see her frustration and disappointment with no improvements to her memory loss, which is very concerning. I'd love to inquire about working with Stephen, and if you feel your clinic could help uncover what is going on. Looking forward to your response. All the best, Beck. Beck, we can absolutely help you with this. It's unfortunate that a lot of the doctors that you've worked with over there have not helped. I can tell you exactly, again, I can't cure, treat, or diagnose disease, right? That's not my job as a naturopath. But here's what I can tell you. I've seen this hundreds of times, and it's what leads to dementia. Your mom was on a cortisol-based steroid, right? She was on probably pregnizone or something like that. What happens is it drives your cortisol levels up, drives stress hormone up, because it's a natural anti-inflammatory. So again, conventional medicine is only interested at short-term results. They will literally destroy the body in order just to try to help you with your symptoms in the short term. Really bad idea, right? Because now we see it affecting the brain. Well, that's because if cortisol goes really high, if you checked out my three previous podcasts on Alzheimer's, then you know that's one of the causes for dementia. But here's the nice thing. We can work on this because we know why it happened now. And that's why I always ask for these tidbits. Like always tell me what you feel, you know, you don't even think is important. Always tell me that, right? Because this is important. I know it happened after heavy steroids. Well, I know that most likely drove cortisol up, which caused the memory loss, which caused the brain fog, right? This is very, very common. I had this myself, right? So before I had Addison's disease, I would have high cortisol because I was under a lot of stress and then crash. It came down. So your mom is most likely suffering from now low cortisol. How would we know? Well, we won't know until we run something called the thyroid adrenal hormone test, or even just the adrenal hormone. Now, you can run that with a doctor near you, but obviously you've tried that, and even your naturopath, which is surprising, didn't run those tests, or they couldn't figure it out from there. So what can we do? Well, you can simply order the... This is what I would do. I would order the organic acids test, the hair tissue mineral analysis, and the thyroid adrenal hormone. So the starter kit plus the thyroid adrenal hormone... Of course, you can always run the big five. Those, that's the best way to go in the world. Like, There's nothing better than that. That's what I would recommend. But if you can only do three out of the five, that's what I would do. And that will allow us to give you specific recommendations on how to help rebalance the body. Great question. And Beck, there's no doubt you can find your answer, whether you're working with someone over in Australia, now that you have this information to go on, or you work with our team. Caleb is up next. Hi, Stephen. Just wanted to say, I absolutely love listening to your podcast and learning new things each week. I'm getting all my friends and family on your podcast. And also, thank you for everything you do. I'm 
after some advice report regarding a problem that I've been experiencing for the past five years, which continues to get more frequent. All right, let's see what I've... What It's a long question, so I'm not going to give you all the whole question, but you can always go to stevencabal.com forward slash 1059 for the whole question today. This is a topic that you've touched on on your house calls, but was a generic case which you summed up to magnesium. I suffer from aggressive jerks while falling asleep and all the way throughout the night. The problem is not only affecting me, but also stopped my wife from having a peaceful night's sleep. I've tried the products below for four to six weeks. Didn't seem to make much difference. Magnesium chloride, transdermal, magnesium citrate, oxide, chelate, up to 600 milligrams per day. Valerian, melatonin, Valium, five milligrams of GABA, brief meditation and stretching prior to sleep. My current supplements are... Mm, those are not ones that I'm recommending, so we'll just move on. Iron. My doctor says it's because my magnesium levels, test the magnesiums in the blood did not show deficiency. Again, just want everybody to know you, you can't test the blood for everything. The blood is not the best place to test everything. The blood simply tells you if you're at a really deficient state. You need to look at much deeper than the blood. I, I just don't, we have to get away from all, the blood testing is something that I do. And I do it twice a year for everyone in my practice. But that's it. I mean, to really find your answers, and sorry to go on a little bit of a a tangent here, you're never going to find your answers with just doing blood testing alone. The blood should look good. If it's not, then there's a real issue, okay? So I'm currently training five days a week. Let's see what else is going on. I'm taking creatine and beef collagen. Was wondering if this could be causing it. The only thing that helps slightly is 800 milligrams of phenylalanine before bed, but the jerks continue. Any advice would be greatly appreciated. It's wearing on my wife's patients after five years. Okay, so if the body is still basically jerking, right? And this is still a neurological, it's called a neuromuscular issue. So it's the brain communicating down the spinal cord or brain stem to your nerves, and then it's stimulating the muscles, right? So it's kind of like when you turn off a car, like an old car, just kind of like shakes, right? right? It like it just shakes the car when it turns off. So what we need to see is what is the imbalance here? And it might not just be magnesium, right? Like that's why we're, when you're doing these things, all of them are great, but what if it's calcium combined with magnesium? What if you're missing that? Or what if you're missing a smooth muscle relaxant to calm the parasympathetic nervous system, which is potassium? right? So you might be missing potassium as well. There's a lot more you know, that have to do with all of this. And what if you could just benefit a lot more from using Adrenal Soothe with dinner? So my recommendation is you've been dealing with it for five years. Let's not guess anymore. Let's test. I mean, that's always my recommendation. Now you could do the organic acids test. That would work great. But above everything else, I want to look at your omega-3 levels and I want to look at your hair tissue mineral analysis. So would I love you to do the big five? Of course. But if you can't afford the big five, understandable, totally get it. Let's do the hair tissue mineral analysis first. Okay. Then I'd like to run the omega-3. Then I would do the adrenal hormone or thyroid adrenal hormone. Then I would run the organic acids test. And finally, it would be the food. That's it. That's what I recommend in that order. So then that will allow us to figure out which mineral you're deficient in or who have too much of, such as sodium. And um, we'll, we'll figure it out from there. I mean, that's that's my... I don't want to dance around the question, but it could be a multitude of things. All we need to do is test, figure out which one it is, and then we dig into that one. And that, I mean, that's that's really how we do things in my practice is there's no guessing. We test. All right. Joe is up next. Hi, Stephen. I was listening to your podcast with Ben Bukulski. I was pleased to hear that you work in Boston. I'm 30 years old, live in the Boston area, would like to make an appointment to come in and talk with you about possible testing and working out a diet plan. Joe. Joe, Thank you for writing in. I apologize that you wrote this on October 4th, and it is now the, what is it, December 30th? Yes. So what we want to do is have you email support at stephencabral.com, and we will help get you set up. So that is it. Hopefully you've applied before then, because these questions aren't seen for about 12 weeks. So happy to help you out. Simply email support at stephencabral.com, or... You can always, again, every question can always be answered at cabralsupportgroup.com, and we'd be happy to help, Joe. All right, let's go to Lauren. Lauren's up next. Hi, my name is Lauren. I'm a relative newcomer to Dr. Brawl's material and podcast, which are fantastic. I'm particularly interested in the Ayurvedic body type podcast he's been doing. I've listened to all of them. I'm having gut issues and a hard time losing weight. I previously lost over 100 pounds in my 20s. 
but it slowly crept up, even though I do my best to exercise and eat a healthy diet. I'm working with a functional nutritionist to get all my testing done, but my question is about the body types. According to what Dr. Brawl, according to what I see from Dr. Brawl's assessment, I'm about 50 to 60 pounds overweight. I'm about half kapha, 30 some percent pitta, and some vata. But the more I think about it, I don't have a lot of kapha physical characteristics. I'm six feet tall, medium boned, narrow shoulders, small waist and ankles, but thick hips, thighs, and calves, and do gain weight easily. I'm getting my hormones tested. I really, really, really want to eat right for my type, get balanced, and lose weight. So how can I find out what I truly am for my dosha? Is this a service that you provide? I would greatly appreciate any help that you can give. Regards, Lauren. So Lauren, right now, we're just at capacity for what we can handle for body types for people. So we allow, we do body type dosha readings for our private concierge clients to find out how to become a concierge client, which is essentially um, three appointments. It's the highest level of service. Essentially, we do an intake for the first appointment, which is 60 minutes long. Then we make custom recommendations with our health coaches on which labs to run. Then you run the labs. I read all of your labs. I give recommendations. You speak with the health coach again. You learn about your lab testing. You learn about your custom uh, protocol that was built for you. And then you do another follow-up about a month after the program to make those adjustments and tweaks to make it just perfect for you. So that's what we do. That's how we're able to talk about your body type. It does sound like you are uh, correct, like at least half kapha. True, right? So when we talk about the kapha, well, we, we worry about glucose levels, blood sugar levels, type 2 diabetes, high blood pressure, all the accumulation because it's more of an anabolic type. So we'd certainly do more of a plant-based diet, more vegetables as the carbohydrates, but we also have to do more detoxification. Remember, the kapha body type is more of an accumulator, where the vata body type is more catabolic. It is more of a wasting-based body. And wasting, meaning like it loses muscle, it loses fat, it loses everything faster, mineral levels, vitamin levels, where the kapha is a more of a holding body type. And that's what I mean by when I say anabolic. So the best thing that you can do is absolutely test your levels. Now, the best thing, the first lab that you should always run for a kapha body type is the thyroid adrenal hormone, hands down. That's the best one to run. And then after that, the hair tissue mineral analysis and then the organic acids test. That's absolutely what I recommend. So you can certainly run these with your functional nutritionist, but they're going to be the ones giving you results. Nothing wrong with that because they could be absolutely fantastic as a nutritionist. And that's great. And our level two integrative health practitioners will be able to offer this service as well. And we'll be the first graduates from that program for level two will be February, March, April, May, right around May um, in 2019. So I'm excited about that as well. All right. Um, great question. And hopefully I at least got you started. Let's get in another one or two questions. Kaylee's writing in, I have Hashimoto's. I'm confused on which foods to eat. I've researched many different diets and one will say something and another will say, no, I struggle with digestive issues, depression, anxiety, most thyroid symptoms. I want to heal my body looking for some guidance. All right. Callie or Kaylee, it's K-A-L-L-I. Highest recommendation is the thyroid adrenal hormone test. Can't recommend that enough because if you truly are dealing with thyroid-based issues, well, we need to heal the thyroid. So in addition to the thyroid adrenal hormone test, everyone who has thyroid issues should run the starter kit, which is the organic acids test and the hair tissue mineral analysis. Hands down. Like, but if you can only run two, it's thyroid adrenal hormone, and then it is the organic acids test. Okay? Hands down. That's what we need to do. So if it's Hashimoto's, we want to look at if there's gut permeability and there's things spilling in your gut. We need to clean that up, right? So that's why, again, if you can do the stool test, that's great as well because we can see if there's bacteria uh, overgrowth in the gut. So these are all things that I do recommend. In terms of foods, well, it's not like you have to stay away from a lot of foods with Hashimoto's. It's just you need to figure out which foods are best for you. With that, you can run a food sensitivity test. Most people, though, with Hashimoto's, just to let you know, are reactive to gluten and dairy, cow's milk dairy. So that's just two that we typically stay away from right away. The majority of the others, we're not going to have to worry so much about. Now, there are good foods for thyroid, such as uh, Brazil nuts and some algae or seaweed that will help with iodine levels and selenium levels. But the truth is that we need to eat for what's going on for your body. And that's why I recommend the lab testing. So I know that might not have been the exact answer you're looking for, but there isn't a Hashimoto's diet. There is a how do I fix my gut diet? And then there is a deficiency diet if you're deficient in selenium or iodine. And then there is, oh, it's a non-reactive diet if you showed up as high on avocado or almonds on a food sensitivity test, right? So all these tests are available by going to equilibriumnutrition.com and simply clicking on the labs-based tab. And that will show you those labs. So hopefully that got you started, Kelly. And we help people with Hashimoto's and thyroid issues literally every day of the week. Same with gut issues. 
Erion, it's E R I O N, Erion or Arian, is the question is this. I see a lot of information here in around weight loss, but what about weight gain? What holds me back is GERD and physical limitation because I can't lift weights due to being disabled. So it's a great question. We do talk about weight gain sometimes, but you're right. More The majority of the population is overweight, 66%. So we do talk about uh, weight loss far more often. Agreed. But here's the issue. Your issue is not about weight gain. Your issue is about GERD, right? Because if we were able to eat the foods that we needed to in order to gain weight and we were able to exercise, you'd be able to put on the muscle and gain weight. So really, the question you're asking me, and again, I don't mean to be uh, short <laughs> at all by saying this, your real question is about GERD. So what I recommend is going back to stephencabral.com forward slash podcast and type in GERD, G-E-R-D, and you'll see all the house call questions on this. I also recommend you type in acid reflux. You will see all of my recommendations. You'll see, and you'll be able to figure it out, right? You'll run a stool test that will test for H. pylori. You'll run an organic acids test. You will run a food sensitivity test, and then you'll look at a higher null hernia. We take you through the steps. GERD is very easy to be able to figure out. There is maybe a half a dozen reasons, and we just simply need to figure out those reasons. Once we do, what we do is we don't fix the GERD, we figure out, we fix the issue that's causing the GERD, right? So that's why naturopaths don't cure disease, because there's no such thing. I mean, honestly, you, everybody talks about GERD, right? So, okay, we've got some we've got gastritis, we've got acid reflux, we've indigestion, we've all all different names, okay? But the truth is this, that there's something causing that. Maybe it's bacteria in the gut. Maybe it's high stress, keeping the lower esophageal sphincter open. Maybe it's an actual biomechanical dysfunction or um, issue such as a hiatal hernia. So there's, there's different reasons why, and we just need to figure out why those reasons are there or what they are, and we go about rebalancing them. And I know I don't wanna make this seem overly easy because you know you still have to do it, but that is the truth of the matter. Okay, one more question, and it's from Dennis. Dennis is writing in, how should I be eating prior to testing to optimize detection of the bad organic components we're essentially looking for? I'm on a candida diet at the moment, and I don't want it to go undetected in case my current diet influenced the test to go undetected to what they're looking for. All right, Dennis, it's a good question. So simply put, you'll want to eat some of your fructin-based carbohydrates. So you can certainly have your all different types of fruits. Don't worry about the exact list and all different types of vegetables. And then you'll also, if you choose to, add in some of your grains and just eat kind of a well-varied diet and simply do that for about two weeks, maybe three weeks maximum. And then you'll take your organic acids test and you'll see if any of those foods are actually feeding the candida. And then what we'll do is we'll make recommendations based on that. So candida or bacteria, right? With the organic acids test and stool test. So that's what we do. We look for the yeast or fungal-based overgrowth, and then we look for the bacterial overgrowth such as Clostridium difficile. We look at E. coli overgrowth, Klebsiella, Pseudomonas, and, and a bunch of others. So that's what we look for. And then what we do is then we give you the nutrition plan, and we give you the nutritional supplements to wipe it out, right? So the supplements are helping to remove. The food is not allowing it to be fed. And then we reintroduce the foods over the course of 8 to 12 weeks, and then your body is then able to take them as we begin to repopulate the gut. So it's a very structured scientific system that we use. We've been using it for a countless number of years, and uh, it works fantastically well. So great question. Good one to end on. I appreciate everyone writing in today. Really do love having you as part of this community. I love the questions. It always gives me new information as well for upcoming podcasts. So if I see more and more of the same questions coming in, I say, okay, this needs to be spoken about more in depth because either I didn't do a good job about talking about it the first time, or maybe it's been too long since I spoke about that topic. And so I'm happy to do more of those shows. I really appreciate you tuning in. If I answered your question today, or if you wouldn't mind going over to iTunes and leaving a review, it will take you less than a minute. And it means a lot to me because what it does is it helps raise up the Cabral concept in terms of the iTunes rankings. More people find the Cabral concept and they get this free information that I do hope will change their life or change their family's lives where they get to live a healthier, happier life. So thank you, everyone. Truly appreciate it. Tune in tomorrow for our Mindset and Motivation Monday. Did you know that the body really only becomes sick or unbalanced in only two ways? Over time, you become deficient in vital nutrients and you also accumulate toxins internally and from the environment. 
As those nutrients diminish and you increase your total toxic load, your body then begins to show the first signs of dis-ease. It's actually quite predictable, and the good news is that if we know how you began to fill up that proverbial rain barrel, we also know how to empty it to begin the healing process. I was fortunate enough to learn this ancient healing process from my mentor after suffering from debilitating diseases for close to a decade. It was only when I began to implement these techniques did I finally overcome my illnesses and go on to live a life of energy and vitality that I now enjoy. I'd like to share with you now what I discovered after traveling all over the world and how to combine the best of ancient healing wisdom with state-of-the-art science. Allow me to teach you exactly how I've been able to help over a quarter of a million people to empty their rain barrel and begin to transform their body and lives into what they've always hoped they could be. To get your copy of the international bestseller, The Rain Barrel Effect, simply go to stephencabral.com forward slash rain barrel.